In the industrial manufacturing industry, it's a male-dominated space, but women are up and coming. In celebration of Women's History Month, I sat down with Rebecca Fisher, who is a distinguished leader at CRG Automation, and had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with her about women in the manufacturing space. Please welcome Rebecca. Good morning, Nancy. Happy International Women's Day. I know, right? I'm happy you're on my show. Thank you so much for joining me today. Absolutely. Very excited to be here. Well, let's jump into it. One of the things that I want to start off talking about is one of the things that are basically near and dear to CRG and yourself, and that is your mission with the Department of Defense. Let's talk about that a little bit because that has a bearing in so many aspects of you being a woman and dealing with uh, that department. So. Absolutely. So funny enough, I almost dressed up like Rosie the Riveter today in honor of, you know, International Women's Day. But I think what's what's so interesting with our mission at CRG Automation, we are a full service industrial automation firm. So where our history started out in packaging and we still do robotic palletizing cells and case erectors and all of that fun stuff, we were brought in by the Department of Defense under PEO Aqua, which is the Assembled Chemical Weapons Alternative, to help with their mission of demilitarizing the chemical warheads that are left remaining in the U.S. And it is a very powerful mission to be a part of, knowing that we are helping to rid the world of chemical warheads. And if you imagine, these warheads have been around since the 50s and 60s. So really, around the World War II era, they weren't used, but this is by international treaty, we have to, as a country, have these decommissioned by the end of September of 2023. And when CRG got brought in, one of the things that we are known for is to solve problems that leave other people scratching their heads. And what we found was they had an incredible team of people working on this, both in Richmond, Kentucky and Pueblo, Colorado, and they just needed a little extra help with the automation. Because imagine, again, these are chemical warheads in, in extreme you know, surroundings that have you know, dangerous ramifications if anything were to happen. So worker safety was of utmost importance and being able to, to help and be a part of the team to redo the line at uh, BG Cap, so Bluegrass Chemical Agent Pilot Plant out in Richmond, Kentucky, is really just an incredible mission that we have been a part of and really so proud to have been able to help and continue. We're working on a, a project in our shop right now, our, our final project with both of the the uh, Army depots. And it's, it's really just extremely rewarding to see how automation can truly enhance a process that was was done you know differently just a few years ago. Yeah, and you you had talked about when you and I had had a conversation about how we had sent sent missiles over to the Ukraine and how we're having to replenish that supply and how you're a big part of that. Sure. It's you know, it, we're looking for our next mission and you see it in the news daily that we have sent over so many warheads to Ukraine that we need to not only replenish our stockpile, but able be able to help continue to send more munitions, you know, specifically 155 millimeter missiles over to Ukraine and other NATO allies of ours. Um, and so we are, we are now working with teams in all across the country to help them automate systems to increase production, right? That's the, the heart of automation is truly right. the, the way to remanufacture in America being able to produce more, take away, you know, tasks that were, whether they were redundant or ergonomically incorrect for the worker, making things easier for workers. You know, I think, you know, you and I have had this conversation that I think a lot of people are scared by automation, thinking that it will take away jobs when in mm -hmm. essence, it truly brings an additional set of hands, right? Literally set of hands, whether it's an end of arm tool on a robot or, you know, a CNC, you know, machine, attending machine, you know, those things all help to make our workers' lives easier and really increase production to meet demand, whether that's, again, in the packaging world, in the ammunition world, in, you know, the automotive world, you know, automation is is truly just the way of the future and embracing it earlier rather than later will help so many companies as we continue to move forward, especially as we look to reshore a lot of things that have 
have been, you know, taken away from the country and bring things back to America, automation is a great way to enhance what a, a plant can do today and into the future. Absolutely, especially with the, the shortage, you know, of workers and, you know, technology is advancing all the time and it just gives people that that opportunity to, to go into areas that they may not have otherwise thought about. So I'm, I'm really excited about what you guys do. Thank you. Let's get into the meat of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you work with men in government and you also work with the military and there's definitely a hierarchy there, um, a chain of command, if you will. Being a woman, how have you been perceived and how do you navigate that environment? Sure. I think, you know, there's, there was a saying that I heard, you know, years and years ago, and I just love it. And I still, I, I teach it to my daughters today. Women were put on this earth to do exactly what men can't. And when you break that down to the differences between men and women, we should embrace that difference. And I think what, what has helped me be successful in the manufacturing world, and especially walking into areas where I know nothing, right? We'll, we'll talk a little bit about my background in a minute, but I, I'm not a technical person. I'm not the engineer. I'm not the person who is solving these complex problems. But what I am is a person who can walk into a room and ask what's keeping you up at night, right? And being able to approach someone from a place of curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. Versus I have your solution, I know exactly what you need, I have no idea. And so one of the best things that we can bring to the table, and I think especially as, as women, is taking the time to truly listen to what mm -hmm. someone's problem is and not try to, to listen to answer, but listen to understand. And Absolutely. that helps to bring the solution to light. You know, letting someone walk you through their process and asking them questions that maybe they haven't thought about in years because it's always been done that way. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the aha moments that I think we find so much excitement with in, you know, not only, you know, CRG automation, but just in general in the working environment is finding those aha moments where somebody says, now I understand why someone asked that or, you know, getting down to the folks who are actually doing the work on a day to day basis and understanding that they're the ones who are truly in charge of the process, getting mm -hmm. to their heads and finding out what little buttons they push that you had no idea that they were pushing to make something work. Those are the fun ones. So I think I always try to lead with curiosity mm -hmm. coming from a, a place of of a, a humble attitude of we're here to help. I don't know exactly how I can help you, but I know that I can. I know that we have done it in the past. And so to come in with that, and especially in a situation where you're in, you know, working with the military and there is a chain of command, I think being very respectful to the chain of command is mm -hmm. important. And I would tell you that it's on both sides and especially as our generation, right? I'm a, I'm a 90s, yeah. right? I was a, born in the seventies, raised in the nineties. Um, you know, here coming up in, in a few years, I'll be in the, the 50s club. But I think what's what's interesting is coming in and now all of a sudden, the guys who are the ones making these the answers are in their 30s, right? Mm -hmm. so it's a new chain of command, if you will, in the even in the commercial world and being able to understand who was put in charge, you know, even if it is the, the younger guy, like being respectful of who is in charge, who is a project lead, will lead to ultimate success, right? There's never a situation where you should feel like you need to go around someone because they're younger, because they're older, because they're you know in the military and they've got a higher ranking. I think always being respectful of that chain of command, no matter if it's you know commercial industry or military, is just important in, in life. I absolutely agree. And that leads me to another question that I was thinking about this morning was, you know, because I've been in manufacturing for about 30 years. Is it a generational thing, the way women are perceived? Because I know myself that whenever I worked with uh, younger men, um, they had a different attitude, I feel like, towards women in industrial and manufacturing than the older sector. Do you find that to be the case or do you find that 
there's actually becoming a shift with the older generation being more accepting of women in this industry. You know, I will say, you know, having only been in manufacturing for a little less than a year, I haven't seen a huge shift in that that generational. At CRG Automation, we have folks in their 60s and we have folks in their 20s. So we have actually, we have more millennials than we do anything else. And what I think has been such a, a fun and collaborative team is really seeing their ideas form in between the generational gaps and understanding that, yes, maybe one of the, the older folks on the team has got a, a tried and true answer but it's always the maybe a younger folk who comes in and says, but have you ever thought about doing it this way? And being able to have that kind of communication, that open communication to debate, right? Without being argumentative, but to debate, to understand, to debate, to find the best way to do something has really been invaluable, at least at CRG Automation. And I would say it really is continuing. I think that, you know, even when I look at my parents and they're, can't figure out their, you know, the new iPhone update, taking the time to help them through that and letting them still feel like they are part of the technological revolution and keeping them in, you know, up to date with Facebook and Instagram and, and being able to see everything that's going on with friends and family. Even from that perspective, I think keeping the, the older generation, and I hate to even use that word, right, but the, the generational gaps keeping them all aligned in one way or another is it's just a compelling argument for all of us because in the end it'll take all of us to to solve some of the world's biggest problems i completely agree and it was just a couple of weeks ago i was talking to our video team and i had to i had to stop and i was like oh my gosh that's like that's material for a raw right there for you know, if you're somebody in my generation and, you know, you're not listening to millennials, you're stupid because they are so brilliant. And I mean, these kids, I call them kids, but they're not kids, <laughs> but you know, they are, they're so smart and they have so many great ideas. It's just absolutely amazing. So I completely agree with you there. Absolutely. I love having some of our, our, our younger, and I'll just call them the millennials because that's what they are. I love having the millennials brought into some of these projects because they mm -hmm. just have a crazy fresh perspective. And they it, really do. It's, it's wild. And, and again, I'm, I have zero technical experience, so I'm wide, eyes wide open all the time, you know, being blown away by what they do. But there's a passion and an energy. And, you know, when I think back to early in my career, I had that too. And I think it's just one of those things that, if you are a culture of collaboration, bringing every layer into the to the mix, and especially in the automation and manufacturing world, I love nothing more than having our shop guys and our engineers go head to head to solve a problem. Because yeah. it doesn't take a degree to solve a problem, right? right? And I love having that, you know, kind of true collaboration to come together and say, you know, yes, engineer A, you can do all of those things, but you're forgetting about some of the basics of how that piece of material works. And I love when our shop guys can can really, you know, handhold with our engineers to, to solve the, the craziest things. Right. And that's what teamwork is all about, right? Absolutely. How key do you think it is as a woman to carry yourself very confidently in the industrial space? You know, I think carrying yourself confidently as a woman in any space is important. You know, one of my, my best pieces of advice came from my grandmother and it was always lead with a smile, right? Like who doesn't like to be smiled at? Being able to smile and see someone reciprocate, like who doesn't like to, to have that warm introduction from across the room when you're walking into a meeting, when you're on a Zoom call, always leading with a smile to me. Smile is, is one of the, just a, a sign of confidence, a sign of security. I think that it's one place that, you know, women tend to have a, a little bit of an advantage of, of you know, being able to, to shine the pearly whites and truly see it through your eyes, right? That you are, it's genuine, that you are wanting to engage, that you are wanting to be in conversation with someone. So leading with a smile to me is, you know, my kind of first line of confidence when I walk into any room. And then always trying to come with a, a humble approach, a, an approach of curiosity, like I mentioned earlier, really 
I'm here to, to learn. I don't have all the answers, but I want to learn. I think people are, tend to, to gravitate more towards that type of personality than the eager salesman who's, you know, I've got a solution. I know the answer, you know, used car salesman kind of thing. Exactly. And I asked that question because I had an occasion one time where I had an engineer who on a call said to me, little girl, you don't know how long I've been doing this. I've been doing this for 28 years and I'm telling you, you know, and he goes into his spiel. And I had been selling urethane for about six years at that point. And I had to just put how I felt at the moment aside and say, well, sir, I know my product and I've been selling it for six years. And I am here to tell you that X, Y, and Z is causing your problem, you know? And I think that if I had, you know, lost that confidence in myself or, or shrank, that that really would have impacted the relationship with the client. And as far as I know, there's still a client with the company that I worked for before. So I just think it's very important, even when you're in a situation, sometimes as women, and not to say that men don't do it too, but I think as women, we will back off a little bit whenever a man kind of, you know, comes at us. And I think it's important to remember to carry yourself with confidence. Absolutely. Never, never stifle your voice when you're in a room where you're not represented. Absolutely. I think that those are, are powerful words to live by that if you know your stuff, own it. Yes, absolutely. Let's talk about your robots. <laughs> Let's talk about the robots. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you really have some super cool robots and automated systems. I am in awe of just all of the, the things that CRG has been involved with in your projects. And I had asked you what your favorite wo robot was, and you said it had to be the palletizer. Yeah, we called them Beauty and the Beast. They, they were on our floor for, for a couple of months, and it is it's so impressive when you, when, and again, I didn't come from the manufacturing world. I don't come from the packaging world. I came from real estate. And so as a consumer, when you truly have no concept of how things make it to the shelves of the store, to understand what these facilities do to package, right? And, you know, we're, we're not talking about the sexiest thing in the world. This is, you know, cartoners and case erectors and, you know, tapes, you know, case sealers and conveyors that lead packages. You insert the product into the package, into the case, you seal it up, you send it off down the conveyor, down to a palletizer where it gets put in a pallet pattern. Everybody knows what a pallet is. Shrink wrapped and then put on an 18 wheeler. Like you truly have no concept of what goes into these, these amazing systems to get the products onto our shelves on a daily, hourly basis. And how many hours, you know, these facilities that we have done some work for, they run 24 seven, you know, to make sure that we have the products that we use every single day on the shelves at the ready at any time. But yeah, our last big robotic palletizing cell, it did, it had two enormous robots. They were, they were Kawasaki's. We used, you know, fan at Kawasaki any brand under the sun really on, on client de you know, decision but they were amazing with a, an incredible joe lynn end of arm tool you know vacuuming tool to pick up and be delicate with the cartons the ability to change the pattern of the palette so based on on how the product had to be received some of them had to be flipped upside down so that it didn't break the carton it just it really is impressive to see how much goes into it and then to realize that the team that was doing this before we put these robotic, you know, palletizing cells in their shop, were doing it by hand, right? Like these are heavy boxes. And so I love being able to go into the shop afterwards and see the, the team of workers who were doing it before. And now they've been, you know, risen up a level to help, you know, make sure that the, the system is running correctly. It's just, it really is amazing when you think about how much goes into what we buy every day off the shelf. Absolutely. And, and you 
again, I can't stress enough. If, if you're watching on LinkedIn and you love robots, you need to look up CRG automation and look at some of the systems that they have built. It, they are incredible. One of the really cool things, and this goes into packaging, tell everyone about the robot that does the Pokemon <laughs> the Pokemon. dice. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. you know, we, we say that we'll solve any problem that someone brings to us. And, you know, pick and place is an amazing thing. And we're working with a, a company out of Indiana right now where we're picking and placing Pokemon dice, right? Dice, teeny tiny little toys and, and inserting them into a clamshell package. You know, where, where previously they were having laborers do this and, and putting them into these, these packages. And it's amazing the precision of these pick and place robots to get them down to, you know, it has to have the five facing up on this one and the six facing up on this one. It's really incredible the minute, you know, the accuracy down to the, the smallest millimeter of some of these robots to do some of this crazy work. I know some people who would really be uh, jazzed to see that kind of robot. Uh, so follow us on LinkedIn. We I post stuff all the time on what's <laughs> happening in our shop and you know factory acceptance test. It's it's a fun it's a fun world. I will tell you that. And you know I know that that uh, we talked previously about you know coming from the real estate world, right? I had a, a a big life event where I lost my husband and made a decision to move from Colorado to Kentucky, and ended up in manufacturing, right? And I want to to make sure that women out there especially and even even men but there is an incredible need in the manufacturing world for people right it's not women specific it's not men specific it is people specific and it has been such a fun and energizing change i think you know my personality is i like to solve problems i like to think strategically i like to be a part of a team and collaboration and i just have to say it's been so much fun and i will say that you know while the the women in the industry we only make up you know less than a third of of the workforce of the manufacturing workforce it is a powerful team of women and if you do get in this industry i would absolutely encourage you to connect with myself connect with nancy connect with the people and some of the women's organizations within the manufacturing space because we have a voice and it's a big voice right and the more that we can bring the younger generation, I love mentoring. That was one of my favorite things to do in the real estate world. And I can't wait to have learned even more in the manufacturing world to, to be able to mentor a new and younger generation of women to come in and, and fill my shoes when, when I decide to retire someday. But it's it's a powerful, it's a it's a powerful group of women. And it's, you know, we can, I think it's fair to say this, right? You kind of get a, a tough chick label when you can hold yes. your own in the manufacturing space. Yeah, and it's it's interesting how that can be perceived. Some people take it better than others. I mean, as long as you have a little bit of a soft touch, you still kind of have that little oomph to you, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I have to give a, a quick shout out to, to MFG Tribe. That's how I was introduced to, to Nancy, was through Kyle. And I, I have to tell you, you know, I've, I've been in my career in real estate, we always had marketing. We had incredible marketing teams. We had incredible marketing companies that were part of the company that I used to work for. And coming into the manufacturing space, we worked with some amazing marketing teams, even here in Louisville. But the one place that I couldn't help because I didn't have the manufacturing background was coming up with content, right? And everybody knows that content is key. And so when I found Kyle and I found MFG Tribe, I have to tell you, if you are in the manufacturing world and you need a company that truly understands your needs, it's MFG Tribe and I would give them a call. Shameless plug. Hey, we'll take it. <laughs> we will so take it. Okay, so you have mentioned that your background was primarily in real estate. What was it like for you going from a woman dominated industry into a male dominated industry? Was there ever any hesitation on your part to make that switch? You know, absolutely. I think, you know, and it's not, maybe it wasn't even the, the male and female dominated. It was the engineers that scared me more than anything. 
right? The people who tend to have all the answers, whether they're right or wrong. And I love our engineers, love them. Uh, you know, our owner of a company is, a, is an engineer and I have to go head to head with him sometimes. And I think that that was probably more intimidating for me than coming from a female dominated world into a male dominated world. I think, you know, at, at our age, whatever our generation is, Gen X, I think that, you know, I, I know my value in a company. I know what I bring to the table and I definitely know what I don't bring to the table. And so I think, you know, that probably was a, a better avenue for me was to try something new and to do something that intrigued me that I didn't know anything about versus always being the person that had the answers in the real estate world after, you know, 22 years. Let's talk about how it is being a, you know, you talked about, you know, your husband passing and I know that you have three children, four, seven and nine. How does being a single parent and a powerhouse leader in your company, how does that translate? I mean, we, we, you and I talked about, you know, when you have a sick kid, you know, how that can be viewed, but what are some of the aspects of your personal life and your professional life that, that you think intersect? Sure. I think, you know, and this is every woman across the country and especially all of us that went through COVID that had little kids, the world changed from that moment forward, you know, having to, to stop and still be able to do work online from home and then keep my kids alert and in class online and my kids are little right nine seven and four they were little and they were you know seven five and two during covid so i think you know the things that i have learned as a woman and especially as a mother is that number one we are all replaceable period right no matter what job what industry you are replaceable so the most important thing that you can do in the world today is take care of your family Right, a stronger family at home makes stronger adults later on to to help, you know, with with everything that we've got going on. But I think number two is that I never apologize for being a mother. Right, that is my number one priority. Work will always happen. I, your connectivity. I mean, goodness, I'm online. I've got my phone. I can answer emails in the middle of the night. I can do a spreadsheet. Never apologizing for being a mother is a big one that I've learned, and it took a while. Right, that fear of, oh gosh, I've got to stay home. I've got a sick one. You know, just this past week, we had a huge storm that came through, you know, Louisville, Kentucky, and it knocked out power and we didn't have power for four days. And, you know, school, the school didn't have power the next day, even after ours was, you know, brought back. And having to, to call in and say, guess what? I, I try very hard not to use the word, I'm sorry. I think that women tend to automatically, you know, someone bumps into you at the grocery store and the first things out of our mouth is, I'm sorry. That's polite, but it's not necessary in the workforce, right? If you always would take it from a male perspective and if they were a single father, whether, you know, widower on their own, whatever it is, you know, there's all of us single mamas and single, single fathers out there. Not apologizing for having to take care of your children first to me is what has, has just defined how I think about things because it's, there's nothing to apologize for. If you are active in your job, if you produce in your job, no one will think twice about you missing a morning, a day, working from home when you have to. So I think that first and foremost is one thing that I've learned. And again, it, you know, I was a mom later in life, so it, it took me a little bit longer to get here. But yeah, not apologizing for being a mom or having a sick kid like, excuse my language, but shit happens to all of us. And so just, you know, kind of holding yourself accountable to what you still have to get done. We all know what we still have to get done to, to make the company continue to run, but not apologizing for it and just being real kind of black and white about it, I think kind of gives me more credence to what a man would say to his boss if he was in the similar situation versus the apologies, which Again, I know as a woman, you know that we, we tend to lead with that. The I'm sorry versus it is what it is. I'm home. Yes. And I mean, you know, I, I was a single mom and, you know, I, I tried very hard. I was so cognizant of, you know, trying not to, to miss work with my kid. I remember taking my kid to work with me one day and he was asleep on the couch because, you know, he was sick 
you know, because I didn't want to miss work. And I think that there's a, a, a better work-life balance now that I wish that had we had had before. It, it's the same for moms and dads, sing, single moms, single dads. But I think that you're right. I think women, we, we just carry the I'm sorry. And, and really, I mean, we're, we're doing double duty. Whether, whether you're a father or whether you're a mother, you're doing double duty and there's nothing to apologize for. And again, I think that's where that confidence comes into play. Yes, I would, I would agree, right? Yeah. You, you have confidence in what you do and what you bring to the table on a daily basis. And, and I think, you know, as, as women, we probably think a lot more about what other people think of us. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, they're not thinking about you that way. Right. <laughs> we really they don't have that much time. You don't have that much time. Right. You're you're giving them way more you're giving yourself way more credit because I promise it's not it's not what's going through their head. So we're gonna go ahead and close out the show with a couple of all about Rebecca comments. Okay. So if someone told you you were going to be dropped off on a deserted island and said you can only take certain items which of these would you choose? You could either have clothes or shoes. Ooh, shoes. Shoes, absolutely, protect, every day. Gotta protect yeah. your feet. <laughs> Can I pick heels? Oh, my heels. Well, see, I was coming at it from the, the fact that I am a shoe hog. <laughs> <laughs> I have a variety of shoes. <laughs> One makeup item, what would it be? Ooh, mascara. Oh my gosh. Okay. Mine would be chapstick. Ooh, that's a good one. Too. I don't even know if that's considered makeup, but anyway, if you could have one book, what would the genre be? The genre, probably like World War II, something history. I'm a big history buff. Okay. Mine would be how to fix shit. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> don't you already know all the answers? No, I don't, I've never built a raft before or a hut, and surely that would be in the book, right? It should be. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> okay, and one tool, what would you take and why? Is a generator considered a tool? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's electricity, a, I don't know. That's a machine. Good, good point, good point. See, again, yeah. I, I'm not the technical, I'm not the mechanical <laughs> person. Don't ask me, I just handle marketing and sales. Um, I, you know, I guess a, a hammer break open some coconuts. <laughs> okay, there we go. I was thinking a leather man because it had all sorts of different types of, uh, like a file and screwdrivers. Of course, I don't, you wouldn't have any screws, but you'd be able to do, you'd be able to do something with it, right? <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and close out the show. And I'd just like to invite anybody who is watching, if you would like to build your brand and you would like to be on my show, please reach out to me on LinkedIn or via email and let me know that you would like to be a guest and we can set up a time to talk. And Rebecca, thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed it and love your energy. Well, thank you, Nancy. Bye.